Yo, what's good E7 fam? Pat here back with another Epic 7 how to play video. And today in this one, we're going to be talking, of course, about the girl who will make you consider changing your religious beliefs to Thideology. I'm, of course, talking about Lionheart Sermia. If you've never seen any of my how to play videos, I go super in depth and cover almost everything you could want to know about the character, including things like stats, skills, some possible end game equipment builds for you to try out, as well as some matchup knowledge for PVP if that's your thing. Before I jump into the actual video, I have to give a huge shout out to my friends Mr. and Mrs. Supper, as well as Aki Lucky, and of course Amir, because without all of your support, this video would not be possible. With that out of the way, let's get right on to Lionheart Sermia's stats. Lionheart Sermia is a light warrior of the Pisces Zodiac symbol. Her stat line is unique to her. Taking a look at that stat line, she has 966 attack, 5,663 health, 112 speed, 668 defense, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, 5% dual attack chance, no starting effectiveness, and 30 starting effect resistance. Overall, I think that the biggest problem with Lionheart Sermia as a character is actually this stat line. The kit is fantastic, and we'll talk about that in the next section, but this stat line just really ain't it, Chief. 5,663 health is really low for a warrior, especially one that wants to be very bulky and defensive like Lionheart Sermia. And for a character that scales off of defense, 668 is low when compared to some of the other defense scaling heroes in this game. They usually have over 700. The speed is higher than average at 112. However, it is not super good compared to the average. Like the average is around 108 and 112 obviously is better than that, but it's not like crazy fast, right? So you would think for having low stats in certain areas, she would make up for it in other areas. The problem with Lionheart Sermia's stat line is that outside of the starting 30 effect resistance, the stats are just low overall in most areas compared to many of her peers. And that 30% effect resistance, you don't really have a reason to lean into it and go past the starting 30. There's nothing that really scales with ER in the actual kit. So it's a very puzzling stat line at the end of the day but we work with what we're given, so yeah. <laughs> As a bit of trivia, before moving on to the skill section, we've talked about it in other videos, but in the English dub of Epic 7, Sermia is voiced by a very famous voiceover artist, which is Sheremy Lee. She is the voice for both versions of Lilibet, as well as Cerise. You can hear her in a ton of different video games and anime, including characters like Makoto Nijima in Persona 5, a2 in Near Automata, Asuna in Sword Art Online, Sailor Venus in the Sailor Moon franchise, and even Lucy from Fairy Tale. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Sermia is voiced by Ueda Kana, who you can hear as Rachel Alucard in the Blaze Blue franchise, Ibuki in Street Fighter V, and she's most famous for being Tosaka Rin from the Fate franchise and all of the various different spin offs. Lionheart Sermia's S1 is Can You Handle the Heat? You acquire 20 Fighting Spirit upon use. It has a 0.6x attack multiplier, as well as a 100% max defense multiplier. Additionally, Lionheart Sermia gains a speed buff for one turn after using it. When you compare this to, say, Fighter Maya, for example, who is another damage dealer that scales off of max defense, this move comes out ahead in terms of damage. It has better attack scaling and better defense scaling than that move. So this move, in general, is a pretty hard-hitting S1. Lionheart Sermia's S2 passive is her signature skill. It's far from over. She gains 40 Fighting Spirit at the start of the first battle. After an ally suffers an extra attack, counter attack, or dual attack, she will dispel all debuffs inflicted on her and activate Shine. Shine can only be activated once every 2-3 to three turns depending on Malagora. Shine is a non-attack skill that grants Lionheart Sermia increased defense and increased effect resistance for 2 turns as well as grants her 50 additional fighting spirit. This should be pretty indicative of where you want to actually be playing Lionheart Sermia. She is primarily going to be used against team compositions and heroes that have lots of extra attacks, lots of counter attacks, and lots of dual attacks in their actual kits. 
This is pretty much to punish them really, really hard every time they do that with the S3, which we'll talk about now. I am the victor. I am the victor is an AoE attack that consumes 80 fighting spirit to actually use and you acquire three souls upon use. It has a 0.3x attack multiplier as well as a 135% max defense multiplier. It has the effect of being an AoE attack with 50% defense penetration, which we talk about a lot on this channel actually lately. Things like how to play Remnant Violet and even the Jacko overview. You guys know defense penetration is pretty huge. It just can outright kill a lot of squishier characters in the game. And this is an AoE penetrating attack, which means that it could potentially team wipe somebody if your stats are actually high enough uh, and the enemy is not super bulky or doesn't really have any form of mitigation. If that wasn't enough, however, I am the victor also grants Lionheart Sermia an extra turn, which means that you will then get the speed buff from her S1 as a follow-up bonus and two turns will have elapsed. So therefore, if you have her S2 passive, it's far from over. Mulligord, it will be live again immediately. This should be a pretty clear indication of what this character's play pattern looks like. You're going to use this super awesome looking S3. Potentially cleave through the enemy team. Take your extra turn. S1 to pick off a straggler. Get the speed buff and then just sit here and wait for your opponent to trigger your S2 passive. It's far from over again immediately. Which will in turn then give you enough fighting spirit. Hopefully to use I am the victor again. Over and over. It's a very simplistic play pattern that is very punishing for the characters that Lionheart Sermia excels against. If you want to know exactly how much damage the moves actually do on this character, because it is a defense scaling character, and it's not super obvious what kind of damage range we're looking at, I will display a table on your screen now with the defense levels of Sermia, the effective HP levels of Sermia. Granted, I'm using 8,498 health as a base here for this example, because that's essentially her base health with just an I-90 helmet. So you can get an idea by looking at this table, what her de defense is at and what kind of HP, effective HP you can see, as well as the damage on her S1 and the AOE damage to each individual target for the S3. The assumptions I'm making for this table, by the way, in addition to the base health with an I-90 helmet, are that I have no artifact on the character whatsoever. So this is kind of like the floor. And we are assuming roughly, I believe, a 1,200 defense hero, which is about like a standard bruiser. So squishier characters are going to take even more damage. And as you can see, when we get around like 1,900 defense, we're hitting for like 6K on each person on the enemy team. And then at 2,100 defense, which is probably the upper bounds of where I think this character is actually going to land, you're looking at around 6,500. Obviously, you can juice this up with your choice of damage artifact. Overall, the numbers are pretty good for the most part. Damage, as you can see, is quite nice. I think the biggest hurdle for most people that are trying to play Lionheart Sermia is either going to be that the character is not fast enough or the character doesn't have enough health for the most part. And we'll talk more about which builds you should use in the next section if you're trying to have either more health or you're trying to have more speed. We can talk about strategies for both. Before that, though, let's talk about Lionheart Sermia's Soulburn, which is on her S1. Can you handle the heat? At the cost of 10 souls, you change the multiplier from a 0.6x attack and 100% max defense scaling move to a 1x attack multiplier and a 160% defense scaling move. It's honestly a pretty good Soulburn at the end of the day. Usually, you're going to use her S3 over here. I am the victor. And after you take that extra turn with this move, if there's a character that is low on health, but not crazy low, it might be worth spending the 10 souls in order to soul burn and pick them off and take them out of the fight. That is the primary use that I have found for the soul burn. It doesn't always work, but the move does get a big boost in damage. And if it secures a kill, then in my opinion, it is absolutely worth it. When it comes to Mulligora priorities, you definitely want to max the S2. It's far from over first. This essentially is her signature skill and it kind of, I'd say, solidifies like her game plan and her gameplay pattern. At a three turn cooldown on this passive, 
the character just doesn't feel really consistent and the game plan just isn't very cohesive. You just have these really awkward off turns that don't really do anything. You really want this to be two turn cooldown so that that way when you combine it with the extra turn from I am the victor, it's pretty much always live after you've done your combo. And then the next time somebody triggers the passive again, you're going to have the combo. So you can just go S3 into S1 immediately and then the passives reset. Rinse and repeat until either you win the game or they win the game. It's a very, very simple and straightforward game plan. After that, you want to be maxing S3. I am the victor first because this is the hard-hitting AoE attack that you are playing this character for. You are trying to punish people that have a ton of counters, a ton of extra attacks, guaranteed dual attacks with characters like Conqueror Lewis. You want to be punishing them really, really hard for playing those types of heroes. And the best way to do that is to max out the S3. I am the victor. And then... After that, you're going to max out the S1. Can you handle the heat? Because it's going to be the follow-up attack. It's going to be another source of damage for this character. She is a damage there. So at the end of the day, there really should be no reason for you to not have this character at plus 15. I first started the How to Play series here on this channel with one of my favorite heroes in all of Epic 7. That, of course, being Sermia. When her Moonlight version was announced, I knew I'd have to have this character and I knew I would eventually be making this video. It was fate, so to speak. Speaking of fate, just like how the original Sermia loves gambling and RNG, her Moonlight version seems very eager to cut out all that nonsense. Lionheart Sermia is a character that thrives in environments where enemies are trying their hardest to win using the game's core RNG mechanics, namely dual attacks, extra attacks, and of course, counter attacks. Her S3, I am the victor, is an incredibly powerful AoE nuke that penetrates a large chunk of the enemy's defenses and can make short work of even the tankiest compositions if you're able to fire off two or more in a given game. It's very akin to Landy's S3 full burst in that sense when you really think about it. In fact, a lot of Lionheart Sermia's gameplay patterns feel akin to Landy in the current metagame. You're either going to be able to keep Sermia on the board long enough to sweep up the competition, or she's simply just going to get picked off very early due to the crazy number of high damage single target nukes that are in the current format. To be successful with Lionheart Sermia, you need to have a good understanding of how each battle is going to play out and whether or not she's going to be able to activate her S2 passive, it's far from over, before she gets to her very first turn. If you're confident that an action that you or your opponent will take will trigger her passive in the opening turns of a match, it's a pretty good indicator that you should consider drafting Lionheart on your team. The two builds that I'm going to show you in this video differ in terms of setup, but they accomplish the same goal at the end of the day, and which one you decide to go with is going to be based entirely on your box and your personal playstyle. The first build that we're going to talk about is a speed set build for Lionheart Sermia. This is for players who are trying to be here for a good time, not necessarily a long time. Basically, those of you who like to play very aggressively or are cleave players, this is going to end up being the build for you. Looking at the primary sets, we're on a speed set with a critical hit chance offset because, again, low bases, crit hit chance set is like the best offset we could probably use in order to make up those missing stats. For the most part, looking at the offsets, I have defense and health listed here instead of critical hit chance set. That is largely if you have a Lionheart Sermia that is something like double S or triple S imprint and you are looking for more defense for more damage or more health so that the character can survive a potential uh, speedster that has a high defense pen move that's going to try and pick her off right at the start of the battle when she's most vulnerable. Looking at the desired stats, we have 1,764 attack. This is her base attack with an I-90 weapon, as well as a plus 30 of one of the recommended artifacts that we'll be talking about on the next slide. For defense, I have 2,000. Ideally, I would want 2,100, but in my how to play videos, I usually lower the desired stats so that it's more obtainable for a large variety of players. 2100 is probably where you'd want her to be at the Emperor or Legend level, and not everyone that's watching this video is at that level. So I think it's really important that I bring stat lines to a more realistic and manageable expectation for most players, so that that way they can actually play the character and use it in an everyday setting, even if they're not somebody that's like at the very, very top of the ladder. For health, I have 11k. That is... So that, again, we can kind of have a chance to survive something like maybe a speedy Remnant Violet S3 at the start if we have an Arius on the team. 
you probably won't survive, but some HP is better than nothing. If you really want to make sure your Lionheart Sterminia survives, we'll talk about a Lifesteal build next, which is, you know, more for those players that are trying to have a bulkier Lionheart Sermia. For speed, I have 215, and this is the lowest that I would go. Realistically, you want between like 225 and 235. If you could get like 230, that would be fantastic without sacrificing too many of the other stats. That's ideally, I think, where you want her to be. Looking at the critical hit chance, I have 100% because it's a damage dealer. Consistency is the name of the game. Critical hit damage, I have 270. That's the lowest I would probably go. Ideally, you would want 300. Like, this character probably should be like 2100 defense, like maybe 11k HP or like 10.5k HP, 225, 230 speed, 100 crit chance, 300 crit damage. That's realistically what you want the character to look like if you can get it. But again, I realize not everyone can. Effectiveness is at zero. Effect resistance is at the base of 30. I just don't see a reason to dump anything into effect resistance. The debuffers are going to get you pretty much no matter what. So that's why I've just left it at the base. Looking at the right side, I have a crit damage necklace, defense percentage ring, and the boots are speed. Crit damage necklace obviously gives us the most amount of damage, which is what we're trying to do. The ring is defense percentage because it gives us not only bulk, but also damage because it's a defense scaling hero and then speed is so that we can take our turn in a timely fashion that's why we've chosen those for the boots looking at the artifacts i have chosen a symbol of unity because everyone should have access to it from their guild and i do think it is the best option for the character because one of the primary characters that you might be trying to play her against is green violet Green Violet has a lot of counterattacks, obviously, in his kit, which will trigger your S2 passive a lot. However, she doesn't have hit chance in her kit, so therefore, the matchup is either like a 50-50 or slightly in his favor. I personally like a symbol of unity because it gives me not only a ton of extra damage, but it makes that otherwise 50-50 matchup a lot more in my favor, and I can feel a lot more comfortable about playing Lionheart Sermia into her. If for some reason you want to use Symbol on a different character, Portrait of the Saviors is another option, or you can use Draco Plate for a mixture of damage as well as survivability if your Lionheart Sermia keeps dying too often at the early stages of most fights. Taking a look at the per piece average here, we have 12% critical hit chance, 10% crit damage, 6 speed, and 22% defense. As I've said in a lot of my videos in the past, for things like the defense percentage ring, make sure it also has some level of flat defense. It will bring the per piece average that you need for that defensive score down. So again, when you're looking for trying to get a lot of defense, make sure you have some flat defense on your pieces if you can actually squeeze it in there. The second build to talk about is a Lifesteal Lionheart Sermia build. This is for my turn two bruiser gang players out there. I have personally had more success with this build. However, it fits my play style. If you are a more aggressive player, feel free to use the speed one. They are both roughly the same in my opinion in terms of performance. I've had guildmates who play Emperor and Legend players in World Arena and do just fine with the speed one. So just because I play the Lifesteal one does not necessarily mean that it is better. It's just the one that I personally have had more success with. And it's gonna depend again entirely on your play style and your box on which one you're going to want to choose looking at the primary sets we are on lifesteal with a critical hit chance offset if you again you have that double s or triple s imprint lionheart sermia you can consider chasing either the defense set for more damage or the health set in order to help lionheart sermia overcome her worst matchups she is more susceptible to high damage single target nukes with a slower build like this one so she really could use the extra thickness from the health set. Looking at the desired stats, we have 1764 attack. This is the same as the last build. Looking at the defense, I have dropped it to 1800 defense because this build requires a lot more health in order to do its job. You can go as high as 1900, which is about what I have. Some of the best players in the game that I've seen play Lionheart Sermion on Lifesteal. It's difficult for them to have a high health total like I have here and exceed 2,000 defense. If you can do it, by all means, go for it. For health, I have 14.5k because this will give you a decent chance to actually dodge the S3 true damage nuke from Rimuru. If it's a tank one and you somehow have a barrier, you might actually live. It's usually by the difference of only like 100 or 200 HP. 
but 14.5k health or better is really where I think you want Lionheart Sermia. If you can go 15 or even 16k, I've seen a mad lad go 17k on one of the streams, then by all means go for it. Again, if she's able to stay on the board, she will life steal a lot of it back up, assuming your damage is not nothing. So again, whatever health you can get over this is amazing. For speed, I have 185. If you can go faster while still keeping the desired stats, I'm all for it. This is a very hard stat line to hit, even for newer players, I feel like, just because, just in general, again, character is very stat hungry, has very poor base stats. So to get her to function and do well, you really, really need good gear. 100% critical hit chance, 250 critical hit damage. If for some reason you still can't hit some of these stats, you need some health, feel free to drop the critical hit damage a little bit, like you maybe 235, 240 in order to get everything else to line up. That's fine. It's not going to break the bank. It's only when we start to go like 180, 190, you've switched out the necklace for the most part that you're going to have issues. Again, health, in my opinion, most important stat, followed by defense, and then after that, critical hit chance, and then it's a toss-up between speed and crit hit damage. You can drop one of those below where I have if it gets you the health and defense totals where they need to be. Taking a look at the right side, nothing has changed. Crit damage necklace, defense percentage ring, boots are still speed. Artifacts, nothing has changed here. The exact same reasonings as the last build. Looking at the per piece average, 12% crit chance, 14% defense, 16% health. And then this last spot is a toss up between speed or crit damage. If it's gonna be speed, you want somewhere around like 10 to 12 because you're not gonna be able to get speed and crit damage. You're not gonna be able to get all five stats you need. You only get four slots per piece. So I leave it to you to decide. It needs to be roughly six speed average per piece and roughly five crit damage per piece. So you might wanna go like 10 crit damage on one piece and then 12 speed on another piece. Again, I'll leave it to you to get everything to line up. As always, use flat stats in order to make things work where you need them to. For teammates, the thing we're looking for first and foremost for Lionheart Sermia is a damage mitigation source. The character is incredibly vulnerable to a lot of high damaging single target attacks before she gets her S2 passive. It's far from over off. So we really want to pair her with characters like Fallen Cecilia, Peyra, and Troublemaker Crozet. I don't think I really have to explain Fallen Cecilia and Peyra. They are two of the best heroes in the entire game. And Troublemaker is someone I recommend a lot in my videos, but 40% damage share will allow your Sermia to survive. And with the option to give his S3 a combat readiness boost, you can essentially get your Sermia to the top of the line very quickly and allow her to unload her combo. Other characters you can consider pairing her with are characters like Rowana. Obviously, Lionheart Sermia is very, very good against a lot of counter-attacking or dual-attacking or extra-attacking based heroes, and Rowana synergizes very, very well in those same matchups. She gets you a lot of healing as well as a lot of combat readiness, again, to help Sermia get off her combo. And then finally, Amelia is another option for you to consider. Most people will try to bring Politus into Amelia when you pick her in draft. So you can take Amelia early in the draft, and if they take Politus, you can essentially turn that back on them by picking Lionheart Sermia. You have a very, very strong two-man cell in both Amelia and Lionheart Sermia because they cover each other's weaknesses very, very well. If it's not already obvious from her S2 passive, Lionheart Sermia excels against characters that use a lot of dual attacks, extra attacks, and counter attacks. We already talked about Politus in the previous section. You can essentially cover the weakness of your non-attack skill using heroes with Lionheart Sermia versus Politus. She just doesn't have the damage to really kill your character. And you'll be able to cleanse any debuffs off of her thanks to your S2 passive. Bellion should be one that is fairly obvious for the most part. Lionheart Sermia feels like she was a hard counter that was directly made to answer a lot of Bellion based teams on Elbrus Ritual Sword. Pretty much any action that you take will trigger Elbrus Ritual Sword, which in turn turns into more fuel for your Sermia. And then her AoE attacks will again keep the cycle going over and over and over again until one of the teams is actually dead. Conqueror Lilius is another one that you can consider because she is guaranteed to have a dual attack on her S1. Assuming your team can survive through her initial vigor turns where she's trying to snowball the game out of control, Lionheart will eventually take over the game if you can hold on long enough with characters like Fallen Cecilia and essentially turn the tide and win the game for you. And then obviously, any character that has 
some kind of counterattack based mechanic is very, very good to farm and use as a battery for your Sermia. Think of characters like Green Violet if you're on a symbol of unity. Mercedes with her magic for friends will also fuel your Lionheart Sermia. And then finally, characters that take up counterattacking stances like the newest character, Arya, are also great for you to play Lionheart into. Bad matchups should be fairly obvious as well. This character has low base health and is vulnerable to very high damaging single target true damage nukes as well as defense penetrating nukes. The absolute worst character to be playing into is Rimuru Tempest for sure. He is very common. He can steal the buffs for his team from your S2 passive. And then his true damage nuke completely ignores how much defense you have built on the character. She has very low base health, as you know. So that S3 Devour at Black Flame has a very good chance of killing her in one hit, which is why in the teammate section, I highly recommend it that you bring some form of damage mitigation source. Or in the character build section, I told you build a lot of health. It's because of this character. This is the worst matchup in my opinion and you should always be wary of how you're going to interact with the character what the turn orders are going to be and how you can play around him because you're going to see him a lot other characters that you can consider bad matchups are high single target defense pen characters such as hua young remnant violet and even a character like jacko valentine all of these characters can outright kill you off the rip if they go before you you just won't have the defense buff up and you'll just die in one hit and then lastly, I want to highlight Blue Crow as another potential bad matchup because his S3, Siegfried, is a true damage nuke at the end of the day. He provides a ton of damage mitigation for his team. So essentially, he can kind of counter your Lionheart counter. You will use your S3 and he'll be able to soak up all the damage thanks to Arius and his team might survive due to the defense buff. And then he'll be at low health and he could just turn around and use his S3 Siegfried and take your Sermia completely out of the fight or whichever character he so pleases. And that is going to do it for how to play Lionheart Sermia. As always, if I missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. Should have a couple more videos out hopefully this week, including one for the Triple Banner Summon. I know many of you have been asking for thoughts on that and what to take. So please look forward to it. If you want to see more Epic 7 guides in the same style, there should be a playlist on your screen now. For everything else, feel free to hit me up on Discord. As always, have a nice day. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.